Hey, in this video, we're going to learn more about Roans and reactivity and Svelte by applying it in a real-world example, a modern payment form. We're going to be creating some common reactive UI features that you typically see in payment forms nowadays. To start off, I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Svelte and Tailwind plugins installed. We'll begin with a payment.svelte component, which will be the starting point of our HTML. And in there, let's create a div that fills the entire screen with a background image by giving it a class name and then styling that class below. In our full screen div, we'll put another div that'll be the box our payment form will be in and give it a slightly opaque rounded look. And now we're gonna need a handful of input boxes. So let's create a new component file called input and defined and style them in there. Like we learned in the previous video, we can access any input attributes to our component by using the props room. So here we plan to take in a name, an optional placeholder, and an optional value. Then we can send those to the real HTML tag just like this. Then to style it, we'll do something kind of like this. And then let's go back to our payment component and add a input component to see what it looks like. Let's pre-fill this now with the real inputs we'd want to use. So first an input field to type in the amount to charge. We're going to want to change it manually in this example because we want to see a matching credit card fee amount change dynamically at the bottom. Also we'll need a name field. and a credit card field. Then below that, the two other inputs side by side. So to do that, I'm gonna use a flex box as it makes it a little bit easier. Then almost the same for a country and zip code field. So we'll copy and paste, except we're gonna make our country a select list. Let's make an input select component as well. We'll import props like we did on the text input. And also copy our style from the text input as well. And now let's add that component to our country area. The special thing we need to do with this component though is pass an array of options for the dropdown. So on top of our payment component in the script tag, Let's make an array with a few country names. Then we'll send this to our input select component by sending an attribute called options and setting it to the country's array. Then our component will add options to the props and then down below check to see if any exist and if so, loop through them and outputting an option tag. And it looks pretty good so far. Let's just finish up by adding a button, a disclaimer, and some info upon the credit card fee that we'll finish later. I want to add some reactivity to the form by having icons for Visa, MasterCard, and Amex next to the card number. And as the user types their card number, it'll automatically pick the correct icon to highlight. So let's throw all three icons in our input box. We can allow our input component to have icons by just including HTML in between the component tag and then the component rendering any children. So first let's undo the auto closing tag here and make it a separate ending tag. And then in between there, put whatever we want. Um, we're gonna add icons, so we'll add three image icons that I have available already. And we'll also group all those in a div as we're gonna use that div to position them here in a few. Then in our text input component, wrap our input in a div that is relative so we can position the icons later. We'll add to our prop destructuring. We'll make the children property optional though by setting it to null. And then after the input, check if children exists and use the Svelte 5 render tag like this if so. You can now see we have three icons showing up. Let's absolutely position them over the input box by going back to that parent div and positioning it 
absolutely. The plan is to have them gray out if it's determined it's not that type of card. So to do that, we need to know the current card number. So up in our script tag, create a svelte five state variable called card number and bind that value to the card number input. And remember from our last video, we need bind if we want the value to flow back into the variable when it's altered in the input. We also need to go into our input component and set it to bind a bull in the props and also bind it here the longer way in the HTML attributes. And to test to make sure this works, let's add the svelte effect rune to run some code when the card number changes. This effects rune works by looking if any state component in the block changes, and if so, the block of code is ran. So for our test, we'll just add console log card number. And as you can see here, every key input is logged. Each card company has the same pattern for their card numbers. Like for example, Visa starts with a four, Amex starts with a three, and so on. They are more complex than that, but for this example, Let's just make it test it based on the first number. Let's create three derived variables that will be either true or false based on whether or not the card number starts with that certain number. Remember that derived variables will change when the state variables reference in them change. And then down in our icons, let's make them gray with CSS if their matching variable is false. Here I'm using the JavaScript shorthand if statement between the svelte curly braces. So if they are false, it'll add the CSS filter to set the grayscale to 100%. And now they are all gray starting out, but if I start typing different card numbers, the correct icon gets its color back. Now let's make our expiration date automatically check the month, month, year, year format as they type. And if they do it wrong, we'll have it highlight the box in red. We'll also limit the input to five characters. Again, we need to be able to read the value for it. So to do this, create a state variable for it and bind it to the expiry input. Now in our effect rune, which just has the console log for now, let's stop the user from typing in more than five characters and we can use slice for that and we'll just set the value to itself. Then let's only check if it's correct if they type in at least one or more characters. So we'll check the length to do that. And for the test, we'll make sure the third character is a slash and the other characters are numbers using a simple reg x or regular expression test like this. In order to track this, let's make a new variable outside of this though called expiry OK. And if the test passes, we'll set it to true, and if not, set it to false. Then down in the expiry text box component, we can add a style attribute and make the background light red if that new variable happens to be true. In order for the style to get accepted though, we need to go into our component and add it to the props list with a default value. And then we add it to the input element as well. Now if we test it out, as soon as we start typing, it turns red until we fill it out correctly or until we clear it again. We can then do something similar for the CVC code. It should be three or four numbers. So create a reactive variable for that value and one for determining if it's valid or not. Then add some if statements in the effects room to check the length. And the presence of numbers. And make the background light red. And here we go, that's working well. Uh, right above the submit button, let's add a little bit of a standout box that'll explain the total to be charged. We're going to pretend there's a 2.9% credit card fee or $1.50 and whatever is more. We'll display the amount to be charged from the box at the top plus the fee. 
and we'll do that in a nice big font to make it clear what the total charge will be before they click the button. To calculate the fee and have it update in the HTML, again we'll be using the Svelte rooms. We need to track the value the user put in the to be charged box on top. So we need another state variable for that. And then we bind it to the input component too. And for this one we can use a simple derived room to figure out the fee. So up at the top of the page create one called card fee and it'll just be the result of the total times 2.9 but if that result is less than $1.50 we'll return $1.50 instead. And again this is just a standard JavaScript inline shorthand if statement. This can be made easier to read if needed in a full if else statement. And now in our box above the button, we can insert the total to be charged. And a smaller blurb explaining this includes X amount for the card fee. Here, notice the formatting looks odd. So let's go up to the top and create a JavaScript number formatter function that'll automatically make it look like US dollars for us. This is built into JavaScript, and you can check out the other things it can do in the JS docs. Then to use it down below, we type formatter.format and wrap the value in parentheses. And we also don't need the dollar sign anymore, as that does that for us as well. Now we can check it out, see if it works. Notice here though, if we type in a smaller amount, the total isn't correct. This is likely because our total is being treated as a string and is getting concatenated instead of added. So let's fix that by just converting it to a number like this. And now we can go test it again, and it looks like it's working great. And I think that's about it for this video. We got to make some common reactive UI features you see on most websites using the runes in Svelte. We used some of the if statements and an each loop, and we created some more reusable components that can be applied to even future apps. If you have any questions about this video, let me know in the comments, and thanks for checking this out.